Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new series. Uh, as it's probably apparent because of the title of the video and what's actually in frame right now, we're going to be doing Ruled Waves 2. Now, I did a series, a very short series on Ruled Waves 1, and I, I had to drop it due to some uh, save error. Uh, I was planning on doing another series of it, but then I heard this was coming out and it just kind of kept I kept pushing it off so that I could just play this instead. Uh, but this is the sequel to the first Rule the Waves game, and Rule the Waves is a naval simulator uh, that's... Um, it simulates combat in the, in the first game between 1900 and 1925, uh, as well as the designing and manufacturing and naval management of the navies in this era. Rule the Waves 2 adds, keeps all of that adds in a longer time to play, so it goes from 1900 to 1955. It also adds in uh, aircraft management. There's there's naval aviation in the form of, uh, of aircraft carriers, land-based uh, aircraft, and even uh, like zeppelins and airships. Uh, we also have various types of aircraft carriers uh, to choose from, uh, and naval search planes. Just a whole bunch of stuff has been added into the game. So you get uh, the the pre-Dreadnought, Dreadnought kind of uh, transition, but then after that, you also get the interwar period and the transition from big guns to naval aviation as the uh, masters of the seas. So it's interesting. I've played a, a game uh, before this in the, this uh, this release to kind of get my head around the changes. Uh, but uh, I just want to say I am not an expert in this area. I'm not an expert in this area. I'm not a big naval guy. I do enjoy it, but I'm not really into ship design. And I, I don't know necessarily what uh, the difference between a normal hull and a bulged hull is. Or, or sometimes I don't know what the terminology is. So, so bear with me for this game. But I think uh, I have rambled enough so let's get into the game by the way i know that this is weird because it's it's a, a screen cap that's because the game doesn't necessarily have a lot of graphics and it's not a full screen game i can't really do anything about it so you'll have to deal with my uh task bar on the bottom most likely uh but either way let's go to the new game and uh there is a new start it used to be able you only started in 1900 uh, but they added a 1920 start that, uh, if I recall correctly, it's, it's it, you know, it's 20 years less on that you can play, but it's also, like, a lot of things are set in, like, you, get, you start with a Washington Naval Treaty, I'm fairly certain. There's there's a couple of things that are added in there to make it a bit more interesting. I'm not going to play that, because, one, I want to do a grand campaign, uh, and the other one is, is I've heard some things about uh, the ship designs in that start being a little bit wonky, so, yeah, we're going to go for 1900. And uh, here's where we choose our nation. Now, uh, in the last game, they had all of the nations represented here. So the major naval or the major powers in Europe. So you have uh, the United Kingdom. You are well. You have Great Great Britain, uh, German Empire, France, Italy, Austro-Hungary, uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and Russia, as well as uh, Japan and the United States. Uh, in the last game, they also had uh, the ability to play as Spain and the Confederate States of America in an alternate history start but they only have the csa now uh so i don't know if the spain start will be added or if they're just not doing it this time but either way i spent a lot of time thinking about what i'm going to play and you probably realize it because it's in the video title but i'm going to be going with italy now the reason why is because italy is i would say a second or third rate power uh it's not in the back of the pack, actually, because that goes to Austro-Hungary. Uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, it is the worst out of the starting nations, because uh, it, it has a budget that is horrible. Uh, Italy is slightly better. Uh, it's about on par with Russia, I think. It's a, uh, Actually, yeah. So, so Italy Italy's a little bit better than Austria-Hungary, but not that good. And I kind of want to do that. I want to play this because I want to see... If we can bring it back, if we can make it into the rulers of the Mediterranean and expand its colonial empire, 
Uh, I don't know how long this game is going to go for because it's a pretty hard game, but we're going to try. But Italy, a uh, leader is a prime minister, though I'm fairly certain it's a kingdom at this point, but the, the major actual government, that, uh, the, the part of the government that actually holds power is the, is the uh, elected officials. So it's a limited democracy. It's built areas of the Mediterranean, so that's where all the ships are built. It has a naval, it has a game naval budget of 28,000. I think that's 28, I, I'm not sure if that's in millions of, uh, I guess pounds would be the, the currency of choice now. Uh, historical naval budget would be 10,000. Uh, we're cautious, we have a poor education, we have inconsistent naval policy, some corruption in our government. Our starting dock size is 15,000. We start with no oil. We have a research advantage in ship design. Okay, cool. Uh, a bonus tech for triple turrets. Nice. Uh, and a bonus tech of motor torpedo boats. Okay with that. And our biggest gun we start off with is a 12-inch gun, which I think is better than some. It's a little bit worse than France uh, and England. We're on par with Russia. And we're better than Germany uh, in that case, and all obviously better than Japan, and about on par with the U.S. So yeah, I think that's a fairly good start. Uh, and our opponents will be almost everybody but Japan. Huh. Actually, didn't notice that. So one of them is not in the game. Well, I guess that kind of sucks. J Japan would be an interesting uh, opponent, but uh, I guess we don't don't really care either way. Let's go ahead and press OK. All right, our name will be Naval Secretary Roach. We'll go with a large fleet size. Historical resources, I think, starts uh, gives us the historical... Um, uh, what's the word? Historical budget, so we're not going to go with that. Research rate normal. We're not going to put on varied technologies. We don't want the AI to have an advantage because they already have enough of it. I don't want a slowed aircraft development. I want it at a normal. And I'm gonna have the. Sh I'm gonna. I'm gonna come in like we're a fresh-faced naval secretary. We've been elected. We're fa we're fairly young because we're gonna have to survive to 1955. Uh, so whatever we come in with is that's in the the legacy fleet, which is uh, the fleet that the nation starts off with, will just be what we have to deal with. Just as just like if we had just come in, if we were a, a newly elected or a newly appointed secretary. So, uh, let's do this. Oh, select a game slave. We'll go with two. All right. Okay, it's building it. It's building it. All right. So, what do we got here? Okay, we have the Roma class. All right, and don't expect me to pronounce anything. I know I'm playing Italy, so I probably should have tried to learn how to pronounce some Italian words, but eh, fuck it. Uh, you don't expect that from me. Uh, so yeah, we have only two heavy cruisers, so we're low on heavy cruisers, fairly low on light cruisers. We have a fairly good number of destroyers and quite a few battleships, actually. Uh, let me just check here. In terms of battleships, we're actually doing fairly good. We're beating France by a fairly good margin and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Uh, and Russia and the UK? What? Yeah, wow, we actually have more battleships than anybody else. So we're winning the battleship race, but our our cruiser force is horrible. Uh, so is our light cruiser, our, our, our heavy cruiser, or well, I guess they would be armored cruisers, and our light cruisers are both horrible uh, at this point. We really need more of them, uh, and we don't have a lot of destroyers either. So apparently our previous predecessor, well, like previous pre that's kind of redundant, our predecessor uh, focused very heavy on the battleship race. So let's see what the Roma class looks like. Let's view design. So it's got four 12-inch guns. 12 6-inch guns and casemates, and 10 3-inch guns, probably also in casemates. I don't see any turrets. It's got two torpedo tubes, submerged, 18 inches. Uh, central range finder, it's got a 9.5-inch belt, a little bit light for my taste. 2-inch decks, all right. Uh, turrets are the same as belts, so that's good. Uh, battery, and it has a 10-inch conning tower armor. Okay, it's not that bad. It's actually fairly fast for a legacy uh, battleship, so I'm not... Two, actually, I like that quite a bit. That's that's a fairly solid ship. Uh, let's see what the lighter one, the the Benito Brin, uh, or Bean. I don't. Somebody will correct me. Uh, let's see. All right, it's a little bit lighter. 
it's a, yeah, it's a little bit lighter in terms of the belt. It's a little bit slower. It's got a fairly... It's actually got the exact same armament, except it has... Uh, four torpedo tubes. Which are kind of useless on a battleship and with how I use them. Uh, so, okay. Alright. Okay, in all honesty, battleship force is not too bad. It's, it's fairly good. We won't have to touch these too much. I might want to do a redesign on these, uh, these, uh, Benitos, uh, once we get some machinery saving, so we can maybe try and, uh, get some better gun, which is just so we can, we can squeeze a little bit more out of them, because they are, they're right on the cusp of basically being useless, uh, in, like, maybe two or three years, because that speed is going to hurt us. Uh, let's see here. The Marco Polo class. What do what do we got here? Oh, two 10-inch guns in turrets. Uh, it's got a 20-knot speed, which isn't too bad. Uh, 12 6-inch guns, 10 3-inch guns. Got four submerged torpedo tubes. A 6-inch belt, which isn't that bad, actually. One and a half inch deck. Uh, yeah, 6-inch conning tower. I'm, I'm not... that. That's okay. The only problem I have is with the gun. If this could have been... If this could have been a two-gun turret, and we could have brought that down to nine or eight inches, I would have been good with that. Uh, so yeah, that's a problem. Okay, let's see. Uh, the Nino Bixo? I'm going to go with that. Uh, the Nino. Eh, it's pretty, pretty average, in all honesty. The belt's actually a little heavy for a light cruiser at this time, and the, at least from what I see, I've usually seen. Uh, and it's fairly fast. I would have liked it to be maybe 22, because I like putting uh, my light cruisers on rating. Uh, and if it comes down to it, usually whenever you have light cruisers on rating in the first game, uh, they get intercepted by a heavy cruiser. You want to be able to run. And most heavy cruisers at the start of the game are about 20 knots. So if you can get about 2 knot advantage, that gives you enough of a speed advantage that you can run. Uh, so that's a thing. And then we have some 400 uh, ton. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, it doesn't even have two main guns. It's got one three incher. Oh, that is horrible. Uh, and what are our other destroyers like? These are better. They've got at least two main guns. And they're a little slower, actually. A little slower, but they're not short range and cramped accommodations. So that makes them a little better. So we'll probably phase out these destroyers, these little 400 tonners for the 500 tons at some point. Um, let's see what we got ships under construction. Okay, we got two more battleships. These are 5,000... Yeah, these are 15,000 tons. They're a bit heavier than our Roma. So what do we got here? Okay, they've got 7-inch secondaries, which is a bit better. Uh, the same armor as the Roma. Uh, battery's a bit better, I think. Um, actually, let's see here. Is the battery armor a bit better? Uh, four and a half inch. Four and a half inch. Yeah, they're about the same. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, two anti-aircraft guns, which I don't, actually don't think we can make, so that's surprising. Um, uh, two submerged torpedo tubes, three, or ten three-inch, uh, tertiary guns. This isn't bad. 18 knots, though. 18 knots. Oh, I didn't notice that. 18 knots. Oof. I don't like that as much. If we if we just could have got that to not... If we could have got that to 19 knots, we could have kept these for a little bit longer. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, there's something, though. They'll be useful for a couple of years. Uh, and then we have two more Mo Marco Polo uh, ba heavy cruisers. God damn. Okay, let's let's... We, we see our legacy fleet. It's it's a good starting point. We've got a good, solid core of battleships, but we need heavy cruisers for our... Because uh, the heavy the battleships are good for fleet battles, but we need heavy cruisers for raiding. We need them to lead uh, other forces. Uh, and in cruiser actions, they're incredibly important to have. Uh, we also need quite a bit more in terms of light cruisers. And our destroyers, I'd like to get rid of the 400 tonners and maybe uh, replace replace those with 500 tons. And then maybe get another, I'm going to say, 10 would be good. Because we are also going to have to, if we've checked here, because if we know anything about Italy at this time period, uh, we have Libya, 
Well, basically, we have all of the our normal possessions that we would that Italy would have in the Mediterranean, except for uh, uh, Italian East Africa, which is in the Indian Ocean region, which means we're going to have to have that garrisoned. It doesn't need to be garrisoned much, but it needs to have some ships on station. So I would like to put maybe a light cruiser and a squadron of five destroyers in the Indian Ocean. Just enough so that if we, if they do, if we are at war and they do send like a squadron or some raiding forces, it won't say we are being blockaded in that region, which will give the enemy victory points. So that's going to be a priority. Uh, we don't have a lot in terms of funds or in reserve for a monthly balance. Uh, so, first things first, I want to go to a doctrine. I want to get gunnery. That'll increase our maintenance by 30%, but I'm okay with that. We'll apply. It'll take us 12 months. I'm good with that. We need to make sure that we can hit what we're trying to hit. And research. Uh, we have a bonus in ship design, so we have an advantage to that. So, we are going to go to high. Uh, I want, hmm, what else do I want here? Let's go ahead and let's pick up, uh, light forces and torpedo warfare. Let's get a naval gun advantage. I want to get up to the big boys and get like our 13 inch guns up there or maybe improve our 12 inch guns. Uh, cause if I recall, let's just put that there. If I recall, uh, I'm fairly certain open design yeah we have a negative one quality on our 12 inch gun so i'd like to improve that if we can she got three there uh let's go for some fire control we may not have the biggest guns but we will try and have the most accurate guns hopefully um I usually like going pretty heavy on the on the subs. Subs are a great way of getting uh, war or getting victory points during war, just by sinking enemy merchant fleets. So we're going to we're going to go for high on that as well. So I'm good with that. Let's see if oh oh I, oh there's a tab for naval guns. I'm an idiot. Uh, so we have st our three inch guns. We have a quality one, but that doesn't help us at all. Um, so our eight inch guns are quality zero. So those should probably be what we arm our heavy cruisers with. Um, and yeah, we don't have anything up to 20. Uh, also, we're gonna, we're gonna bring this up just a little bit to 10% of our budget. Just give us a bit of an advantage there. Okay. So, no subs there. What's our coastal fortifications like? We have two 4-inch coastal batteries and a couple 6-inch. That is pretty poor. What I'd want to do... And so here's my strategy here. Here's where we're going to get into it. I don't even know if we're going to go to the next turn in this episode. Um, because of our current strategic situation, which is uh, the Great Britain has bases in the Mediterranean, but they're not necessarily their most important bases. We're not going to give them a reason to garrison the Mediterranean or to really hate us in any way. France is a step above us right now. Now, they do have to keep their home area which is uh, i love this little glitch because it, it, it repeats the if you're at that uh zoom level it just repeats the word so it's north europe north europe uh so <laughs> instead of just northern europe either way um Fran this is france the uk and uh this is this is basically all the major powers a uh, build area and russia um so they're they have to keep this pretty well garrisoned to keep parity with each other so this the Mediterranean is a secondary area for France. So that may be an, something we can go ahead and try and poke at them. Maybe get Tunisia or Sardinia or no Corsica. Damn it! I keep I reverse these islands all the time. But Corsica might be something we try and go for. Uh, my goal is to gain control of the Mediterranean uh, and basically have naval superiority against anyone else who would be in the Mediterranean. But we are currently. Uh, I guess uh, our main rival in that is a rival in a, I say that with air, with the most sarcastic air quotes I can, which would be Austria Hungary. They have their build area in the Mediterranean, and they are outclassed in almost every air. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say they're outclassed. They just have more. Sh uh, I wouldn't say they outclass because they have more ships than most. But we do have more battleships. We, in a fleet battle, we will have an advantage. 
but I'm hoping to get either naval parity or superiority in terms of ship numbers with Austria-Hungary, as well as tonnage numbers, and then try and force a war with them. We will then try and destroy their naval power in the Mediterranean and take this area here. This, uh, uh, hold on, uh, Dalmia? Uh, Dalmatra. Don't know. Either way. Uh, somebody will correct me. Uh, see, that's the thing. I don't have to be correct. I just have to say it wrong enough that people get annoyed. They put it in the comment section. Either way, we're going to try and take this uh, base from them, which will give us most of these bases along the Balkans. And it'll severely weaken their economy. Because uh, I think that's like half their economy right now if we took that. So that's, um, that's amazing if we can. I mean, it'll be basically nothing for us. But then again, we're far better off than they are. Um, and then we're also going to try if we get some pop-ups about like trying to take uh, Albania or Greece. I, I would love to be able to take those so that we can basically secure the empty or non-controlled bases or areas in the Mediterranean. I mean, they're non-controlled in, the, in the sense that a major power does not control them. Sorry, I had to take a drink there. Because this series is going to be hell on my voice because uh, there's basically nothing other than that. I mean, I'm going to put like a, a backing track of probably some Victoria 2 music in the background just so it's not my droning voice. But either way, uh, that's the strategies. We're going to try and knock Austria-Hungary out of being a country or being a, a problem in this war or in this uh, series fairly early on so that we can then focus on France. Because France has got a major amount of territory in the Mediterranean. And once we take that, hopefully we'll be able to at least fight Great Britain to a stalemate in the Mediterranean. And hopefully be able to get Gibraltar and Egypt, which will secure us the Suez and obviously the Straits of Gibraltar. Whether or not we can do that, I'm not, I don't know, but... That's going to be the goal. Um, we already did the Doctrine. We don't really want to build anything right now because we don't have a lot of money. We can't increase dock size because that costs us 2400 So we're not going to do that. Uh, there are a couple of buttons here, like aircraft types, but we don't have any aircraft types available. This is where you could request proposals for new aircraft from companies. Um, but... Aircraft don't exist yet since it's 1900. Uh, this is also where we could uh, find air groups, and this will tell us like what we have available and total numbers of aircraft. Uh, and this is also where we build uh, fortifications. This is also where we uh, well we build fortifications here, but we'll also build airship uh, bases and uh, airfields uh, from this menu in the future. So yeah, I think uh, I think let's. Let's end the turn. And to, oh, uh, we want to get some information on. We're going to do a high intel effort on Austria-Hungary, but let's uh, let's see what happens in the next turn. Okay, France has laid down a heavy cruiser. So it was Russia and Germany, uh, and the U.S. has laid down a battleship of the California class. Okay, nothing too big there. First thing we're going to do once we get enough money is to increase our dock size. I want to bring that up to 17,000. Uh, uh, um, how many months we got? 11 months for our next heavy cruisers. Okay. Just want to double check. So we need at least... We need to get maybe another, I'm going to say, three heavy cruisers so that we get a fairly good-sized force to counteract Austria-Hungary. And we need... I'm going to say probably five more light cruisers before I feel comfortable taking on Austria-Hungary. And then however many destroyers we decide to pick up. Alright. Next turn. Our scientists report they have trouble finding, uh, figuring out the concept of destroyers of up to 600 ton displacement. And Great Britain delayed down another heavy cruiser. Our armored cruiser. They're not heavy cruisers yet. Because uh, uh, technically at this point in time, I'm fairly certain they were just called armored cruisers. Okay, the new naval secretary believes destroyers are the most important part of the navy. He wants you to build at least 15 additional destroyers. 
Hmm. We do need destroyers. We are currently in the Mediterranean, which would be France, Austria-Hungary, and Great Britain. In terms of destroyers, we are the least. We have the least amount. Uh, we could probably do that. We'd have to halt one of the battleships. But then we could probably pay for 15 destroyers, because they're not that much. This would also give us a bonus to our budget and some prestige, which prestige is a very good thing. I do want more prestige. I want to... Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Okay, a thousand is actually a good number that we can work with there. So why don't we go ahead and build ship. Type, let's go for the 500 ton because it's the most useful. Okay, 12 of those. Let's halt your construction. So we had 12, so we need 13, 14, so we need three more. Okay, there we go. 15 additional destroyers, which will bring us up to beating everyone else, and definitely beating Austria-Hungary, which would be great. So, okay, let's go to the next turn. Tension's low. What the what? That was a phone call. With tensions low, Parliament votes to reduce... Oh, you just gave me more to build your fucking destroyers, Prime Minister! <laughs> fucking... <sighs> well, either way... Let's, uh... Let's look at maybe halting a... Heavy cruiser. We just need to keep the destroyers building for a little while, and then they'll, uh... They'll say, oh, we, we're, we praise you for that, and it'll go back. Either way, also, we have enough. We're going to get the dock size up. I know we're we're going right to the edge of our spending limit, but I think it's best that we do that now because it takes a year to do so, uh, to build this up. Our top spy managed to get a hold of blueprints of the new Austrian ship, the battleship uh, Ven, under construction. Oh, wow, this is pretty shit. Uh, four 10-inch guns. Oh, if this is if this is their new battleships, oh my god. Uh, so four 10-inch guns, 12 6-inchers, eight 3-inchers. It's got a couple of torpedo tubes. It's only 10,000 and, uh, 10,500 ton displacement. 18 knots. Oh, that deck armor's pretty crap. Oh, wow. Yeah. We can definitely beat those. Not only do we outnumber them in battleships, but we also apparently have far better ones and bigger ones. Our scientists have reported they've discovered the exciting new research area of fleet tactics. Oh, that's nice. Uh, the government is increased naval spending. Yeah, just when we have decreased naval spending for some reason. Uh, yeah. Oh, but looking at the time, I think that's going to be the end of this first episode. Uh, yeah, so not a lot happened, but we have set down a whole bunch of new destroyers. We're doing a naval, uh, reconstruction program to get our destroyer, uh, force up to, uh, the levels we want it. Uh, we have sacrificed some of our capital ships for that, but I think it's worthwhile in the end. Um, yeah, but I, th I think that's a fairly good episode. So thank you for joining me for this episode. If you liked it, please leave a comment down below. So hit that like button. If you want to help support the channel, consider the subscribe button down below, as well as take a look at the description down below, where I have links to my Discord and my Patreon page. I'll see all of you in the next episode. Bye!